countries such as the Netherlands, Italy, Sweden, Germany, Spain, uh, Portugal uh, are all crucial contributors to the SKA project and, and to give us with insight into how Europe is organizing itself, uh, how Europe is responding to the SKA project, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Chiara Ferrari, who is an astronomer at the Observatoire de Côte d'Azur in France, but she's also the director of the, the Maison SKA in France, in other words, she's at the head of the French SKA effort and recently has been elected as the coordinator of the European SKA Forum. So Chiara, over to you. So indeed, it's, uh, it's, I would like to warmly thank you for giving the opportunity to present uh, this European perspective. Um, Europe has been a, a big player in uh, the SKA since the beginning with several programs that have been uh, um, going on with uh, in Europe to prepare the SKEA and to arrive to the SKEA organization and today as you can see there are uh, several European countries that are either members of the SKEA organization and or already a signatory of the uh, future international intergovernmental organization. Um, so um, the um, Europe has been an uh, uh, important player uh, in both the SKA design and uh, uh, in science. From the SKA design point of view, uh, on this map you can see uh, basically what uh, the, the institutes in Europe that have been participating to the effort of the SKA uh, design. Uh, now, um, basically, in all the SKA consortia, there have been uh, um, uh, European institutes involved in the effort with, uh, uh, among other, uh, I would like to recall the important role that Europe had for um, designing the SKA design antennas, as well as uh, um, the computing needs of, uh, of the SKA. From the scientific point of view, uh, the SKA, the European partners, had also very important, have also very important contribution. Basically, in all science working groups, there are chairs uh, that are from European uh, institutes, and this shows, of course, the great interest of Europe uh, in this uh, in this project, and in uh, all the uh, scientific outcomes that are that are expected. Sorry. Okay, so uh, the strong involvement of, of Europe in the SKA that I've uh, been uh, trying to show before is a direct consequence of uh, a long-standing uh, European tradition in radio astronomy and not only in terms of uh, uh, scientific and technical skills but above all in terms of making a full use of a unique form of uh, scientific collaboration uh, involving countries all over the world uh, because in order to see more clearly details of radio sources in the sky astronomer, astronomers use the interferometry technique that links several radio telescopes in different parts of the world together and we recall here the very large baseline interferometry technique that links antennas all over the world uh, world and that even transcended the Cold War and that sees a massive European particip participation through the European VLBI network with several antennas all over Europe involved as well as uh, the International LOFAR telescope that is paving the way uh, to the SK1 law, an effort that is led by the Netherlands and that sees the participation of many European countries. Radio astronomy is fostering uh, through this initiative the collaboration between Africa and Europe with, uh, for instance, uh, the antenna of the European VLBI network connected within the two continents. Europe participates to the African VLBI network effort with its expertise. And uh, I was very pleased to hear the talk of uh, Anna about uh, the DAR initiative that is any, one of the examples of the collaboration between Europe and uh, Africa uh, for uh, quality of education and uh, the related reduced inequalities. Next slide, please, uh, uh, Simon. Thank you. Uh, so uh, among the different the, the different uh, um, initiatives uh, towards the SKA uh, led by Europe in the last years, I would like to recall here the NES project, 
So as we have heard from Phil, and we will uh, hear, hear more from Antonio's talk, uh, the SKA is as a challenging HPC and data analysis needs, both at the telescope site and within a network of regional centers all around the world. So Aeneas uh, it was a three years initiative funded by the H2020 program between 2017 and 2019 to develop a science-driven functional design for a distributed federated European Science Data Center for the SKA. Aeneas, as you can see in this image, has brought together many partners that are institutes from uh, all over the European SKA member states, the SKA organization, European and global infrastructures providers, and very important also partners from uh, other SKA countries, in particular host countries. So next slide, uh, please, Simon. You can just click twice so that I, I have the full slide. Thanks. Now, please go back. Thank you. So uh, Aeneas, uh, that is strongly connected to the European, European uh, Open uh, Science Cloud um, program, it's important to stress that, and the follow-up actions that are currently undertaken at international level for the network of regional centers, uh, can really be considered, in my opinion, um, as, and here I cite the UN roadmap for digital cooperation, uh, those initiatives that are critical to the development of common standards on open data that can guide the private and public sectors on how to provide open access to data sets and so on and so forth. So I think that the NES project is a nice example of uh, um, a collaborative project with a bottom-up approach because it comes from the community and that has brought together stakeholders and has indeed allowed to identify and to start address the challenges for building a network of digital infrastructures as recommended in the document produced by the UN high-level panel on digital cooperation and by the way, I found quite interesting uh, that uh, most of the keywords for the digital cooperation in that document uh, can be found in the, the deliverables of Aeneas. I just made this uh, image to show uh, how much this kind of project are strongly connected to these uh, UN plans. Oh, Next slide, please. <laughs> Okay, so with the with, with the with its computing needs, uh, the SKA is going to be one of the big science projects uh, that will drive developments in key areas of the UN roadmap for digital cooperation, uh, such as, to mention a few, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, but of course, open science best practice, practices and technical needs, and Lourdes Verdes Montenegro will talk about this point in particular. So I think that the SKA, the fact that the SKA is one of those big projects is reflected in the recent signing of a collaboration agreement between the SKA organization with CERN, uh, which by the way was one of the partners of the UN high level uh, panel on digital cooperation, and with the two leading European organizations in the domains of HPC and network infrastructures that are Praise and Giant. Uh, let me add uh, that is not only a matter of technical needs for which this collaboration agreement is uh, mostly welcome, but above all of human resources and expertise. So the kickoff meeting to start working together is taking place right now. And uh, I can say that the objectives that, uh, um, so if you can just click uh, Simon, the objectives that are being discussed are perfectly in line uh, with the digital capacity building recommendations of the UN roadmap for digital cooperation. Uh, really this morning and right now, ongoing discussions are perfectly in line with that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Simon. In the preparations toward the um, SKA HPC and big data needs, uh, we have not to, for to forget that there is a strong interest of European SKA partners uh, in the development of green computing solutions. And this is perfectly in line with the objectives of the rec recently published program for Germany's presidents of the EU, EU Council 
Next slide, please. As well as uh, uh, with one of the points of focus in the introduction of the UN uh, roadmap for digital cooperation, you see uh, the needs, the computing and data needs are becoming uh, exceptionally demanding in terms of energy. So we cannot separate the digital revolution here from the Green Deal challenges. So next slide. So from the European perspective, with its computing needs, we are really convinced uh, uh, that the SKEA is a worldwide high-level technology showcase uh, that offers a great opportunity to minimize uh, the environmental impact of HPC and big data centers, and these with the optimized IT components, uh, modular architectures, as well as smart energy systems using renewable sources. So uh, such optimized technological bricks are critical to allow, in particular, uh, the African continent to enter in the digital, digital age uh, with all the benefits that are coming from the exponential growth of this sector. So uh, European actors are really ready to use this opportunity to foster an academic industry partnership within Europe and with SKA partner to explore state-of-the-art uh, avenues in this domain and again actions like the collaboration agreement with CERN can, can just help in this uh, in this sense. So next uh, next slide please. Uh, when we talk about energy uh, of course there is not only the compute the energy needs related to computing there are there is the overall computing needs of the SKA to move antennas uh, and uh, for the electronics and so on and so forth. So uh, again, uh, Europe is uh, deeply interested and is already working on uh, collaborative studies uh, on the overall optimization uh, of the SKEA energy system. A study has already uh, been conducted, uh, several studies actually, and uh, some of them are, are, are very recent, have been conducted by EU-based uh, companies and the research uh, institutes in or, with, together with the South African Red Astronomy Observatory in order to optimize um, the use, the, the production and the use of energy. And I would like to, to, to stress that these studies have already um, focused on the use of hydrogen. That is uh, uh, one of the most hot uh, topic of uh, uh, today technical dev developments in the domain, in the field of, uh, of energy production. So uh, my next and last slide, please, Simon. So I, I hope uh, that uh, um, I could show uh, in my few uh, slides that uh, the, um, the great experience uh, of uh, Europe in radio astronomy has been put as a service of a much wider community. Uh, that the SKA is a fantastic opportunity to foster this already long standing tradition. And so, all the activities, in particular, focused to uh, quality of education. Uh, reduced inequalities, but also gender equality. Uh, we, you can see here how many women are uh, participating to the SKA for effort, also with the uh, role of responsibilities. So I, I think that is one project that has really a particular attention to this uh, topic. Uh, but uh, but uh, as several colleagues have already stressed, we have seen uh, the excellent presentation of William in this respect to the SKA will not only be for radio astronomers. Um, the SKA will rely on, but also contribute to, uh, state-of-the-art developments in key fields such as information technologies and green energy. And what I would like to stress is that in all these domains, uh, there is already a strong partnership uh, all around the world. So the, the partnership uh, for the goals uh, for the SKA is, uh, is intrinsic in the project um, between academic institutes, between uh, uh, industries at all, uh, uh, of all dimensions, not only big companies, but also SMEs. And uh, I, 
I, I, I really think that uh, uh, multilateralism, but also multi-stakeholderism, a, a word that I found in a UN document, is really very well describing what's going on. And all of these, again, uh, can only serve uh, for our purpose of education and training opportunities to provide to uh, the young generations a fantastic chance to explore the universe, uh, but also uh, to use the skills in many other fields. And I thank you a lot. Thank you very much. Um, so first of all, I think re reminding us all what a critical role Europe, and we should acknowledge also the, the programs of the European Union have played to enable the Square Kilometre Array project to, to reach the stage where it is today, as you correctly said, dating back to the design studies, the various preparatory actions, and indeed, under the current framework programs, um, Europe continues to be a critical enabling partner for the success of the SKA project. And incidentally, there are many historical friends of the project I see on the call, and I will not mention their names, but I would like to acknowledge the contribution to the project. And then thank you also, you've really contextualized the contribution of the SKA, not only to the sustainable development goals, but to critical imperatives such as the digital agenda or indeed uh, the, 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 green, the green economy.